Taking care of my horses, mate, is very important to me, as it is you. Well, mate, on today's show, I'm going to be taking you to Conrad, Iowa, to Ritchie Industries. They make the very best automatic waterers in the world. Come with me, mate. I'm Clinton Anderson, and I have a method for training horses. Getting horses to behave is simple. It's training people that's the real trick. Join me as I tackle some of the most challenging situations with problem horses and with problem owners. It doesn't get more real than this. Let famed Aussie horseman Clinton Anderson turn your dreams into reality. Clinton Anderson opens the gates to his world famous Down Under Horsemanship Ranch in Stephenville, Texas. You can see Clinton in action on tour. You can practice his methods at home. But there is nothing like getting instant feedback from Clinton himself. Book your clinic now and set out on an adventure of a lifetime for you and your horse. Wish you could be turned loose on the Down Under Horsemanship Ranch? Working your horse over the obstacle course? Taking advantage of the world-class arenas and miles of trails? It's now a possibility. We're renting out the ranch's RV spaces and giving you access to one of the best equine facilities in the country. You'll have the chance to work cattle and get private lessons or watch Clinton train his performance horses. Head down to the cowboy capital of the world and fine-tune your horsemanship alongside Clinton and his team. Disposing of your manure on your horse farm is a very important task and something that I take very seriously. Whether you've just got two horses or you've got up to 40 or 50 horses, ABI have a manure spreader designed for you. It takes care of your pastures and makes sure that a waste product turns out to be a great fertilising for your fields. When you want the very best for you and your ranch, make sure you go to abiequine.com to check out their line of innovation products that are the very best. Hey mate, if you're looking for a fun and inspiring way to challenge your horsemanship, then join me for a three-day horsemanship clinic so I can help you become a better horseman. At each clinic, I work with only 20 participants, teaching them the fundamentals groundwork and riding exercises. My clinicians will join me to ensure everybody makes progress and receives one-on-one -on -one help. Spectators are welcome to watch all three days of the clinic. We'll also have our retail store set up with all of my products and kits. So mate, if you want to learn the method from me personally, sign up to participate or get your spectator tickets now and I'll see you on the road mate. Hey Leon, how are you mate? Clinton, good to see you. Good to see you too. Well, you've been inviting me up here for years and I've finally taken the time to do it. What do you got to show me here today, mate? Well, we're building the Echo One today and I would love to show you how we build it. So let's go. Okay, okay. mate, let's go see it.
So Leon, I've been using your products now for about 10 years, and I gotta say, I'm excited to get up here and see exactly how Richie products are made. They do a phenomenal job for me and my horses, my customers. Are you gonna show me around the factory? Well, we're gonna not only show you around the factory, but we're gonna st show you start to finish how we build one of our best equine units. So have you actually help us build it from start to finish? I know. Okay, what's step one, mate? Step one is mixing the resin. The resin that we buy, it's graded on fineness. In order to flow through the mold, it has to meet the quality standards. What, what have we got going on here, Leon? Our resin comes in in bulk. It's a powder when it comes in. Right. And it is uh, just white. What we're going to do right now is we're going to mix color with it okay. so that we can make a yellow unit. And of course, yellow and red are the Richie kind of colors. Yellow and red are our basic colors. We also make green. Uh, we make our black thermal tubes, but then we also make custom colors for other people. Whether we're making it yellow or red or green or black or pink or whatever, we have to mix that color. And then, see, she's got that yellow pigment weighed out, and that little dab of pigment's all she needs for 150 pounds of resin. Not much, is it? No. It's like watching mom bake a cake. So that just spins it around, mixes it up? The people that are mixing know exactly how much to put in so that there is no variation in the color of our units. Now that we mix the resin, now we'll go mold apart. Right now, let's do that. The engineers tell us how much resin goes in each mold. They weigh the resin out. They put exactly the right amount of resin in there. And then as it goes in the oven, it melts. And through the process of the two axes turning, that liquid covers absolutely every part of that mold. Then when it goes into the cool off station, it solidifies. Leslie's going to show us how to unmold right. and then remold our Echo One. OK. So that next time around, you can do it. Right on. Show me right. the way, Leslie. When Clinton got up onto the platform and actually watched the molding process, I think that initially he was going to ask to do one himself. But after watching Leslie do it, he realized that there was a whole lot more to taking the mold apart, getting the part out, and putting the mold back together than uh, he was going to learn in five minutes. So he was content just to watch her do it. We build all our own molds. Okay. When we were having our molds made outside, which most people do, then if you have grief, you have to take it down and send it away, and it might be weeks before you get it back. If we have trouble, we can usually fix it today and get it right back up. So, there's your Echo One base. Okay. So. Because of the mold, you end up with a completely hollow part. Right. And then that's what we're going to fill with insulation. So all that's left to do to this part is trim the flash off of it. Okay. And now the flash is where the two parting lines come together. And we, we still take a tool and clean all that flash off because we don't want any sharp edges. Not that it would hurt an animal, but it just looks better it looks more finished to have that all cleaned off, trimmed off, polished. Removing the flashing looked pretty easy, so I thought I'd give it a try. We believe the trimming is important because it just gives it a finished look. Right, where else do I clean? I think this is broken. It's broken. Operator. Show me. Obviously, a bit of a touch to it. Well, you were too gentle. See, I can't make that stick of yours work either. I think Leon meant my stick and string. Good job. I'll get the next hundred. It's really not necessary for the functionality of the unit, but we think it looks better and feels better. The, the customer feels like they're getting something that you cared about. 
Okay, now Clinton, we're gonna go to the steel shop and we're gonna make a trough fish unit we just okay. built. All right, let's get going. is not for horses. They deserve Stanley Premium Western Forage. There's no better place in the country to grow forage than Idaho, and Stanley is one of the country's largest producers. From pellets, cubes, and chopped forage in bags to compressed and three-tie bales, Stanley cultivates the premium forage types horse owners demand. Because your horse needs hay, but he deserves Stanley Premium Western Forage. Fundamentals has shown you the basics. Now it's time to put those principles into practice. Get out of the arena and get on the trail. This all new supplement will show you how to apply the method on the trail. You'll get 10 instruction packed DVDs and two hardcover books. That's over $800 worth of training for only $3.99. Get up, get out, and get on the trail. Ever wish Clinton Anderson would just come by and help you with your horse or that he would put on a clinic in your own arena? Well, now you can get the next best thing. Meet the Clinton Anderson Certified Clinicians. Trained by Clinton himself, these great horsemen have met all the requirements of the Clinton Anderson Academy. 16 months of intensive training at the Down Under Horsemanship Ranch. Theoretical and practical testing on Clinton's method. Hands-on experience with problem horses. Now, there is a Clinton Anderson Method expert willing and able to come to where you live and ride to teach a private lesson or put on a public clinic. Learn at your own pace. Get personalized instruction, all without having to travel far from home. So if you can't find the time or the money to come to a Clinton Anderson clinic at his ranch, now you have an option. Get accelerated results. Let a Clinton Anderson certified clinician bring the method to you. Visit certifiedclinician.com for more. The first part of every trough is to punch the drain hole or any other holes that have to be in it. So, Leon, what's going on here, mate? We are making the troughs for the Echo One. All right. We have to put the drain hole in here. The standpipe sits in the drain hole. It has to be in exactly the same place. Okay. And this extrusion actually allows the, the drain plug to seal. That was a relatively simple one because there was just one drain hole. So Clinton got a pretty easy one to work with. Okay, Clinton, would you, would you like to try to make one of these yourself? I'd love to. Here's that. Right on, I gotta Better get some gloves, gloves here. On. We don't want right to cut you. So I pick this up, get rid of the paper. Get rid of the paper, set it in there, pull it back to the stops. Push it to the right hand stop. Right. Okay. And then press both Those buttons. Those two buttons. Yep. That's Legendary. It. I was born for manufacturing. <laughs> born for manufacturing, fellas. <laughs> Is that extra dent supposed to be there? The next step after punching the, the drain hole was to go over to the brake press. You made the blank right. over in the other machine. Now what Ken has to do is he has to bend it up so that we can actually make a trough out of it. So this is what we call a brick press. So he's actually bending this unit so that it can have the ends welded in it, and then it'll be a finished trough. That's a little touchier than, than just punching it, because as the brake press comes down, it wants to jerk that piece out of your hand. 
keep these tabs right there. Just like that? Yep, they've got a foot pedal down here. Push it up against it? Yep, you kind of have it up like that. Uh, so you don't go up. Hit your foot pedal, let it go back up. There you go. When he stepped on the pedal, the part wanted to jump away from him. I think that kind of caught him by surprise. Just like that, hold it. Hold it. There you go, there you go. That's it. That's it. Right out, we're good to go. From here, this trough will go to arc welding. We'll arc weld the two ends in it, right. which will make it watertight. Uh, that breaking process, you looked about as good as I do with that Australian <laughs> stock. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, so I looked a little bit uncomfortable. Anyway, we'll, we'll weld the, the ends in, yeah. then it'll be watertight and it'll be ready to go to assembly. So why would somebody want to have a, a metal uh, trough as opposed to plastic? Well, a couple of reasons. One is the stainless steel is just incredibly easy to clean. You just pull the plug and brush it a little bit and, the, and it's clean. The plastic, you have to scrub a little harder in order to keep the algae yeah. and, the, yeah. and the dirt off of it. What the second reason is that in the cold climates, we hook the heaters directly to the bottom of the trough. Ah. So you can have a, a much more efficient heating system with a metal trough than you can, can with plastic. Right, I might wet you next. Uh, from here, we'd go to arc welding. All right, let's get going. Our arc welding department is where we make those troughs watertight. Right. It's really difficult to weld stainless watertight because of the, the nature of stainless steel. It's a difficult process in order to get it so that it can be watertight without warping it. Light gauge stainless is very, very hard to weld. So it's hard for us to hire welders off the street to be able to weld that light stainless and make it watertight. So we actually train our welders here. See how smooth and even that weld is? Yeah. Well, with stainless, the reason we don't use robots and we use welders yeah. is because with stainless, it moves the entire time that he's drawing that bead down there, and a robot would not be able to follow the stainless steel. Uh, okay. So in order to get a, a watertight weld, we have to use humans because yeah. they just do a better job. Yeah, much better job. Our welders can weld all of our product. We don't have a group of welders that weld this and another group of welders that weld this. They all can go from job to job. So Clinton, uh, do you want to take your hand at arc welding? No, no, mate, I'm going to give you back. I, I've already I've already tried my hand at welding, and I've already embarrassed myself in front of millions of people, and I'm just going to quit while I'm down. Holy I burned a hole in a willy. That red tag means it's been rejected. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Leon, where to next, mate? We're headed to spot weld now. We use spot welding for anything that does not have to be watertight. This is spot welding, and we spot weld things onto our troughs that like what, what don't kind have of things, to be right? watertight, like our, like our heater clips, our thermostat clips, drain right. clips. That's a J-box there. Mm -hmm. It's been spot welded on it. We spot weld things that don't have to be watertight. OK. So it's just more efficient, or what, why do you do this rather than the arc welding? It's more efficient, and it also distorts the metal less. Okay. So anyway, anywhere we can get away with spot welding instead of arc welding, we do it. We end up with a much more watertight unit without arc welding those pieces on. Stay tuned, mate, because after the break, we're going to be showing you more innovation from Richie Industries. Fresh water on demand is critical for your horse's health. Make sure it's always available when you install Ritchie Waters. We've got the model to suit your needs, whatever they may be. 
Get the most energy efficiency with the new EcoFount series. Get the benefits of both steel and poly construction with the OmniFount. Get the best combination of value and performance with the Watermatic. And for delivering water directly to your horse, there's our newly redesigned stall fount. Ritchie set the standard in quality when we invented the automatic waterer in 1921, and we've been the industry leader ever since. So when you buy a Ritchie, you know you're getting the most dependable product on the market, not to mention the best value, service, and warranty in the business. After all, water is essential. We make it easy. Our friends here at Vetrison have a brand new equine shampoo called Foam Care. Because Foam Care is a spray-on foaming shampoo, you don't have to bother filling up buckets or spreading shampoo everywhere. Just a few long sprays and you have the horse covered and you can easily lather it in. If I notice fungal disorders, itchy skin or scratches on my horses, I use Foam Care medicated shampoo. It soothes my horse's skin issues and delivers a deep conditioning clean. Give Vetrison Foam Care equine shampoo a try. After all the metal work, Leon took me to lunch at a local restaurant where we talked about Richie's history and their unique ownership. So Leon, we're here in Conrad, Iowa, in a little country diner here. When did Richie move to Conrad, Iowa? City Wilson brought Richie to Conrad in 1943. Why this town? He had lived here for years and had a blacksmith shop here in town. Right. And he wanted a product that he could manufacture and sell to farmers with making the automatic livestock waterers, he'd be able to have a product that would sell year round. How many people are in Conrad right now? What's the population? Conrad has a population of about 900 people. And how many people does Richie employ? Richie employs 70 people. Probably 15 of those live in Conrad. Now, Leon, Conrad's not a big boom in town. Not a lot of people here, OK? And you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. How do you find really good employees that you've got at Richie? Well, the majority of our employees come from uh, the surrounding communities, and we've been able to find some good quality employees looking for work. And you've told me before that you do a lot of in-house training. A lot of your specialty jobs, you actually train your own people to do those. Yes, we do. We find it's a lot easier to take someone that doesn't necessarily know the job yeah. and train them to do it our way, rather than take someone that already is an expert somewhere else and bring them in and untrain them and then train them to do it our right. way. Leon, how long do your employees stay? Do you have a lot of people that have been with you for a lot of years? We have a, a great retention rate at Ritchie. We have employees that have been there for 30, 35 years. We have one employee that's been there over 40 years. Why do you think that's the case? We have kind of a laid back atmosphere. It's a fun place to work. Uh, we pay a good wage. Yes. We uh, have incentives to encourage people to be productive, but it's a good place to work. It's clean. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things that I noticed in walking around the factory this morning. It, it's, for a factory, it's pretty much spotless. I've been in a lot of factories in my career, and, and that one is really, really neat, kept, swept up, clean. You can tell people take pride in what they're doing. Well, we do. With your large growth in the equine world, what have you found that the equine people in general are really particular about with their, with their watering systems? They're most particular about the fact that it won't hurt their animal. They are more concerned about the fact that their animal is going to have fresh, clean water, isn't going to get scratched, isn't going to get electrocuted, than they are about how much it costs yep. or how hard it is to put in. So when you're coming up with new innovation to change products or invent new products, how does that work? Do you have your own in-house team? How does that process start, get started? Well, we have our own in-house engineering team. We usually sit down and talk about all the needs, and uh, then we'll turn it over to engineering, and they'll come up with drawings and then solid models, and the next thing you know, we have prototypes. Then we put those out and have them tested, 
to see if they're going to work before we actually put them into production. So you guys are kind of in-house from everything from start to finish. You can produce just about everything you need in your own factory. That is correct. And the main reason you want that like that? Well, number one, we like to be in control. Yeah. And number two, we can fix our problems a whole lot easier if we are in control than if we're depending on another yeah. vendor yeah. sending us something or doing a process for yeah. us. So Leon, who owns the company? I know you run it, but who actually owns Richie? Richie is an ESOP company. Right. ESOP stands for Employee Stock Ownership Plan. So each one of the employees that is a part of that trust has stock in it. So as employee owners, we get a whole different attitude about the company yeah. being successful. Yeah, because they're part of it. They're buying right. into it. They got skin in the game. Right. So nine years ago, we purchased the company from Mr. Wilson. The employees, yeah. The employees. And just this last month, we paid it off. Well, congratulations. So, thank you. So we're going to have a mortgage burning party to celebrate. And that's just to celebrate everybody's hard work and effort and getting the company paid off? Exactly. Good. Exactly. Good. I remember one thing that really stood out in my mind. One time I did a tour in Illinois. I was talking about Richie Waters and so forth, and a guy stood up in the crowd. And he said, Clinton, I want to tell you something. And I said, what's on your mind? He said, I've had a Richie cattle waterer in my cattle pasture for 35 years. So it's been through 35 summers and winters in Illinois. And he said, it still works like the day it is when I got it. And he said, you don't get any better testimony than that. He said, that is a product that you just can't, you just can't replace that type of stuff. And I thought that was unbelievable that somebody would actually do that. And that is our goal. That's our goal is that they buy the product, they put it in, they're happy with it, and it lasts. Yeah, it never gives them any problems, yeah. Exactly. After lunch, it was time to get back to building the Echo One. Love for a treasured dam or sire, conservation of your favorite bloodline, the dream of a big payoff. No matter what your reasons for raising a foal, the reward will only be complete if he becomes the horse you want him to be. In the first installment of this new professional series collection, the Foal Training Series, Clinton Anderson demonstrates how his method can ensure your dreams for your foal come true. The Foal Training Series follows two foals, one imprinted at birth and one left untouched through their first exposure to haltering, leading, handling feet, tying, and more. The Clinton Anderson Foal Training Series gives you step-by-step -step instructions and exercises on DVDs and arena mates, all beautifully packaged for your enjoyment. Get the Clinton Anderson Foal Training Series to instill a solid foundation of respect, trust, and willingness in your foal and ensure all your dreams for him do come true. America's ability to feed our citizens is in jeopardy, and some of our most basic freedoms are being threatened. Extremists and lobbyists with their own agendas are trying to strip away the fabric of American liberties. Freedoms like fishing, hunting, and even owning a pet are targets of these extremists. Protect the Harvest can help safeguard our American way of life. It's time to wake up, educate ourselves, and protect our freedoms before they're taken away. You can learn more at protecttheharvest.com. Are you frustrated with your horse's lack of discipline or struggling with his lack of experience? Do you suffer from the lack of time it takes to turn the horse you have into the horse you really want? Well, there's a method for that madness. Send him to the Clinton Anderson Academy and we'll turn your horse into an Academy horse. The Academy trains only the best horsemen to share Clinton's methods with horse owners around the world as Clinton Anderson certified clinicians. Just as these top trainers enroll in the Academy, so can your horse. During the six-week course, he will learn the entire fundamentals level of the method. 
to be ridden in and comfortable with a full gamut of situations. At the Clinton Anderson Academy, we have the time, the experience, and the best training method to help you discover your horse's true potential. So stop the madness. Turn your horse into an Academy horse. Once the product gets to leak testing, we spray a chemical on the seams of the trough that is going to be underwater. Well, this is a process that Iowa State helped us develop because the only way we used to have to leak test them was to put them in water and hold them down and see if water came through. Yeah. But this is a chemical that we actually spray onto that arc weld and it will find its way into the pores. And if there is a leak, we'll be able to see that with an ultraviolet light on the other side. Has this been more efficient or less errors compared to doing it with underwater or what? Well, absolutely. You could not get 100% testing before. It just uh, was too time consuming and, and actually water won't leak through a weld right away right. where this chemical will. Right. So we can actually make the troughs more watertight this way than we could the old way of just holding them down in water. Before we came up with this process, uh, we would test maybe one out of 25 troughs. And then we were getting complaints because we had leaking troughs and, and I don't like complaints. What David's doing now, that chemical that he shot on the troughs before, he holds this light up to it and, and if there was a leak, he would see green shining through on this side. So what's he supposed to see? Nothing. Well, we don't want him to see anything other than just a clean weld. David, hold that up. See where that green is down there? Yeah. Well, that's not a watertight spot because it's above the water line. OK, see But no that's water what down. would show if David saw a leak. And this way, we can test 100% of our draws. Yeah. When they go out of here, we know they don't leak. After it goes through that leak testing process, it goes through a wash bay. And in the wash bay, we're washing off any slag from the weld. We're washing off any oil or dirt that could have got it on it during the punching and the bending process. And then there's a dry off oven that it comes through so that it takes all of the water off of it and it's not sitting there uh, drying moisture spotty. We just got done building your trough. Right. And so now we're going to actually foam the unit and assemble it. Our foaming is the heart and soul of our units because it's the foam that gives it the insulation and makes it so that they are energy efficient. It's also the foam that makes it structurally sound so that they'll be strong and the animals won't be able to hurt them. So he closes the clamps down on it. If you don't, if you don't hold that unit to the exact shape you want it to be, this foam has so much pressure that it would just bulge right. it all over the place. So that's why the hydraulics have to hold it come close. Together. Then he drills vent holes in it so that as the foam expands, there's a place for the air to escape so okay. that we don't end up with, right any, up with any voids. What are these plugs for? Well, the plugs will actually keep the foam from shooting out and getting all over your hat. I can't, no, I don't want that. <laughs> There's usually two reasons why you get foam shooting up out of a unit like a volcanic action. Uh, one is that they forgot to drill the vent holes, which happens from time to time. We're humans. And the other way, which is more common, is they forget to dial down for the smaller units and they shoot too much foam into it. And then there's just nowhere for it to go but out. 
We've all done it. We've all gone home with foam all over our clothes, myself included. OK, so what he's doing here is he's actually dialing in to get exactly the right amount of foam into that unit. And he sticks it in there. Huh. How long does that take to set up, Leon? It takes about 30 minutes. So it what that is, is there's, there's two different chemicals, and they're mixing together in that tube. Okay. And then as that grows, you're going to actually see that foam come up through and come out those vent holes. So while he's doing that, if you want, you can take that, that out of that one. Just do these clamps yeah, just like undo this. them clamps. Now what, lift that just off? Just peel that off. How do you get it off it? Oh, just, just like that. So take the plug out? Yeah, he had a little excess foam right. on there, so you just break that off, just like that. Right on. I might hire you, but you're a little slow. <laughs> right on. What do I do with this thing now? Just stick it right, right over down the right table. Over right on. So while this is setting up, right. we're going to go over and we're going to assemble the unit that Trevor took out. OK, show, lead the way, mate. So what's he doing here, then? OK, he's going to take that trough that we built. Right. And he's going to uh, wire it up. He's going to put the heaters, the thermostats. He's going to hook that all together so that it's ready to be installed. So obviously, these guys here need to be a bit of a jack of all trades. They're, they're doing a little bit of everything. This is not my expertise. Handyman is not my forte. So Leon, Trevor's finished up with this now. Are we ready to put it in or not? Well, first we have to prep the unit. OK, so what's going on there then? So with prepping the unit, Trevor is going to seal these holes mm -hmm. because we don't want uh, any moisture to be able to get into that insulation and, and make that insulation not as good as it is right now. Okay. So the first thing he's going to do on these three parts is seal those holes. And then remember those vent holes? Yeah. Well, he's, he's poking that insulation back there in there just a little bit, and then he's going to iron those holes shut. Just melts the plastic. He just melts the plastic right over it, and that way we don't get any moisture whatsoever in on that insulation. As you can tell, there's a lot of attention to detail that go into these Ritchie products. That's why they have no problem giving a 10-year warranty. They back up what they're doing. Stay tuned, mate, because after the break, we're going to be back with more from Ritchie Industries. This October, Stephenville, Texas is the home to the ultimate horseman's experience. The Down Under Discovery Ranch Rally. Explore Clinton's ranch, meet his team and his horses, learn the advanced training techniques Clinton reserves for his most loyal fans, celebrate with Clinton and his staff with live music and a bonfire. The Down Under Horsemanship Ranch Rally. Space is limited to 500 people. Don't miss out. The thing that I love most about my job is, is being able to build products, new products that, that are going to make a difference. I'm constantly bringing products home, 
using them and seeing how they perform on, on different horses. You know, I, I want to be able to build things that, that actually perform and, and enhance uh, a horse owner's life. I truly, truly love what I do. Richie has always been community-minded. When my father-in-law, Cliff, owned the company and when his father, Cliff Sr., owned the company, they always gave back to the community, whether it was building buildings or bringing in clinics, grocery store, all those different things. My father-in-law actually started the relationship with Quakerdale. When Henry Wolf donated that ranch to Quakerdale, Cliff was instrumental in getting Richie Waters in there at that time. So we've been a supporter of Quakerdale for many, many years. Hey, we're at Quakerdale Wolf Ranch right now, and we do a, a lot of different things out here. We do equine therapy, and we have done everything from the youngest we've had out here is probably three years old, all the way up to the veterans home. We've had several veterans come out. We are certified in equine assisted psychotherapy and learning. So we do a lot with working on uh, inner healing, people that have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, autism, depression, anxiety issues. We use the horses to actually help them to work on uh, presenting issues that are going on in their own lives. Richie's has been amazing. They have saved us thousands of dollars because they provide all these waters for us so that we're able to provide water without a lot of maintenance. We are completely run by volunteers. If we had to come out here and provide water for the horses and then try to keep it from freezing and put individual floaters in each tank, it would be so difficult and so much labor on the volunteers that already give so much of their time. So Richie's support has been amazing. They introduced us to, to Clinton Anderson and we were allowed to come to his event in Des Moines and we raised uh, $12,000. One, two, three, go! We did the Richie ball toss. And not only did we raise a lot of money, but we had a blast. We got to hear Clinton and got to learn a lot as far as uh, things that help us out here because we also have to do our own training of these horses and we have uh, yearlings all the way through. Our oldest horse is 36 years old. So to be able to come and glean some ideas from a trainer like him was such a great opportunity provided by Richie's and by Clinton Anderson and we really appreciated it. The relationship with Clinton just gives us an opportunity to take a facility like Quakerdale and give them a much larger audience. They are a charity, so the more people that know about them, the more support they might get. When our units are assembled, the supervisor inspects each unit before it goes in the box. We do that so that we know that every product has got its parts in it, it's got all its pieces, and we've had two sets of eyes taking that last final look at it to make sure that there's nothing that's gonna go wrong. The standpipe does two things. It acts as a plug, so you just pull it out and, and, and drain the water out of, your, out of your trough to clean it, and then it also acts as an overflow. Okay. So if the water comes up past this water line, yeah. that it would overflow down that hole into, back in, down into the water line. Okay, cool. All right, so the only thing we have left yeah. is the disc that floats on top. Right. That keeps that horse from being able to wash their hay. Yep. Yeah. Any new waterers that I put in, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna get this one with this these, these models for that very reason for that rear because I've noticed the ones that I've got that have got this float in it there is no algae build up whatsoever underneath that because obviously the sunlight can't get to it and builds algae Correct. or any bacteria there's very little food waste out of their mouth like typically when a horse can drink out of a out of a trough where they can stick their mouth there a lot of the grain and hay and stuff will come out of their mouth and you have to clean that out every day or every other day for sure. With these ones, it's kind of like they just use the tip of their lips to drink the water. Exactly. I'd say probably 90% less food comes out of their mouth into the water. So these ones require a lot less water, uh, cleaning. And, you know, especially where I live in Texas, it's it can get cold at times, so I can get away with this one without a heater. But with it being insulated, keeps it, uh, keeps it from freezing. That's correct. So what's next, Mike? Okay. Trevor puts his name on it and dates it because we like to know when it was built and who built it so that if there, if there is ever any trouble with it, yes. we can go back and try to correct the problem. Okay. You don't put I was here, Trevor, or anything like that. I love Susie. Now, yes, we, we haven't found any of that to this day. <laughs> right Leon, what's next, Mike? We just put the parts bags in it. Uh, then I need to inspect it because every unit goes out of here with a supervisor's inspection. And seeing how today, I'm the supervisor, I get to sign it. Right, I then, so, well, sign your name on that deal then. Well, I have to inspect it oh, first. Oh, that's true, that is true. But I have, I have watched it go together. I, I'm pretty sure that everything's in there. So, so that tells us that it's been inspected. So not only is Trevor's signature on it that he built it, but a supervisor's signature right. is on each, each one right. showing that it got put together. So. Since you've helped put this unit together, uh -huh. how about we get you to put the wing nut on it, right -o. and then you can put your signature on it so that we know you were a part of this right operation Right, I think I can handle that. The wing nut is my specialty. And is this it here? That is. Right, -o. let me see if my handyman experience can do this. Now, it's righty tighty in it, lefty loosey. That's okay. exactly right. I got that right. Right, -o. wing nut is on. You okay. And I'm going to sign this right now. Is that right? That's right. Right on. There we go. Anything worth having is worth working for, that's for sure. Not gonna make it here if you got any quit in you. This is where I needed to be the best that I could be. And that's just what we do here. Dedication, ambition, passion. To some, these are more than ideals. They are a lifestyle, a code, a path to something greater. If you think you're one of the select few who can rise to the challenge, who can dedicate themselves to mastering the method, let the Clinton Anderson Academy catapult your skills and provide you with the ultimate experience. If you have what it takes, become a Clinton Anderson Certified Clinician and change your life. For 128 years, ADM Alliance Nutrition has been doing what's right for the horse. It was ADM who cut back on starch and sugar, ADM who balanced vitamins and minerals, and ADM who put forage first in horse nutrition. Today, you can still trust ADM for the information and products you need. 
Learn more about equine nutrition and ADM's premium products at GrowStrong.com. That's G-R-O-Strong.com. ADM Alliance Nutrition, doing what's right for the horse. Hey mate, if you're looking for a fun and inspiring way to challenge your horsemanship, then join me for a three-day horsemanship clinic so I can help you become a better horseman. At each clinic, I'll work with only 20 participants, teaching them the fundamentals groundwork and riding exercises. My clinicians will join me to ensure everybody makes progress and receives one-on-one -on -one help. Spectators are welcome to watch all three days of the clinic. We'll also have our retail store set up with all of my products and kits. So mate, if you want to learn the method from me personally, sign up to participate or get your spectator tickets now and I'll see you on the road mate. I think the Ritchie name, the brand, to our customers means longevity. Uh, they're used to uh, getting a product that's got good quality, uh, got good service behind it. Uh, they're able to get parts for their products. So I think the Ritchie brand is well known and it's known for quality. I've been with the company 24 years. You know, it went from being uh, a way to put groceries on the table to being something that I think about all the time in order to make sure that it's headed the right direction. When we first started getting into the plastic products, we thought it was something that would fade because we really didn't think that plastic would be a product that the farmers, the livestock owners would like. But as it went on and we realized that it was going to take hold, then we jumped out there to try to find the best way to make products for them. So as that transitioned, we were trying to set ourselves apart from uh, the other companies. And that's when we came up with the idea of putting the stainless steel and the plastic together. And that's unique to us. So as you can see, mate, Richie put a lot of attention to detail into all their processes of building a waterer. Your horses will appreciate it. They'll have fresh, clean water in the summertime and in the middle of winter. I know my horses appreciate it, and that's why I back Richie. So, mate, I think all we have to do now is box it up, eh? I think so. Right on. You know, when we started with Clinton in uh, 2004, it was an experiment. We didn't know who he was. Uh, we liked him, but we've watched him grow. And by getting in on the ground floor, we've been a part of that, and it's been a blast. It, it truly has. We've, we've enjoyed the relationship. We think that uh, we've been good for Clinton, and we know Clinton's been good for us. So, uh, you know, I hope to have another 15, 20 years working with Clinton. That made me really friggin' old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Leon, thanks a million, mate, for having me up here at Ritchie. It's been a blast. I've really enjoyed learning about how you make your products. I always known for years that you guys make the best watering products in the world, but now I know exactly how they're made and the quality that goes into it. It's been thanks fun. again, mate. You bet. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Remember, you get what you pay for. When you invest in a Ritchie waterer, you are getting the very best for your animals. I guarantee it. Try them out. Until next week, mate, take care of yourself. We'll see you again right here on Down Under Horsemanship. <laughs>